Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to When the Night Comes. In the last episode, we completed the main game. Harry has been defeated, August is now the Lieutenant General, and Camille is also Lieutenant General beside him. She's now Lieutenant General of the Hunters, and all is right with the world. However, we are not finished with Camille's story just yet. We still have dun, 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 the mini stories to complete, starting with possibly a chimera, probably a big fucking cat. So this is a reference to um, quite early on in the story. Uh, literally, I think it was in the first or second uh, chapter, uh, Piper was sent off to investigate a possible chimera sighting. However, she was like, oh, you know, these people really wouldn't know a chimera from a very large cat. So that's, that's clearly a reference to that. However, I'm not actually certain where this DLC story could go. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where this leads us. Uh, tell us your first name. Uh, it was Camille. Abeline. Uh, she, her pronouns. Hmm. Possibly a chimera. Probably a big fucking cat. Uh, we went with August. Yeah, I would, I would like to follow things on from, uh, from the ending. Let's, let's not just pick a random romance and run with it. Still, I find it quite interesting that they allow you to do that. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of assumed that they would unlock after you completed the main game with that romance. So I, I find it quite interesting that you can, you can pick everything. I'm in August's office, listening to one of our newly appointed junior recruits waffle on about how impossibly happy they are to be serving our branch. As wonderful as that is, and as grateful as I am that Lunaris is now a place that hunters long to work in, rather than seeing it as a death sentence. I really want to be alone with my partner. It's been days since I've so much as held their hand and I think I'm about to die. Around every corner is another pile of paperwork, another night of fairies causing havoc in the woods, another dinner with some random foreign diplomat. So, to say it's a pleasure would be an understatement. August is staring at me where I stand by the door, and I don't think the junior has even noticed me. Their gaze is heavy, a lazy, sleepy smile on their lips, their head propped up in their hand as they lean back in their chair. They look knackered. The junior stopped talking minutes ago, and yet August is still just staring at me. As flattered as I am, I clear my throat. August stands up fast, almost as if someone struck them in the backside with a bolt of their own magic. Do excuse me. It's a pleasure for us to have you here, but I have an urgent matter I must attend to. This poor junior. Of course, Lieutenant General! The junior bows and spins on their agency-issued boots. Their eyes comically wide when they spot me. I have that effect on people these days. I try to not let it get to my head. They dip their head and mutter a hello under their breath. Their cheeks pink as they scurry past and swiftly close the door behind them. I raise an eyebrow at August, a move learned and perfected from being in their presence so much and with a lazy flick of their finger, the door is magically sealed. They walk around to the front of their desk and practically collapse against it, an extended sigh of relief falling from their lips as I cross the room to join them. I want a bath, and I want a big glass of wine, the biggest you can find. Absolutely, my dear. I am on it, I will get you your wine. Do it. 
There really is only one thing I can think that I want, and I take it with little hesitation by pressing my mouth to August's own. It's not my smoothest move, but the way August curves against me is an indicator that I did the right thing. I can practically feel the tension melting away as they curl their fingers in the hair at the nape of my neck, their lips parting and making way for the eager swipe of my tongue. I missed you. Missed this. Their words are spoken as a broken gasp as I trail a line of kisses over their jaw and the tempting, long line of their neck. The room coming alive around us as August's skin tingles and thrums beneath my palms. I'll never get bored of seeing them like this. Of knowing I'm the thing that makes them unfurl. Also, whilst I remember, a very good option for a thumbnail, I think. With a wicked look, August hoists themselves up onto the desk, their bottom lip tugged between their teeth as I pause to observe them and then swiftly advance, going back in for the kill. Come here. Okay. They crook their finger, their cheeks pink, and their now lavender eyes glittering with stormy intent. Yes, Lieutenant. To say we've made good use of this desk would be an understatement. And it only seems fair for us to make sure the quality is fit for a Scria's most important lieutenant. <laughs> I, I love. We're just, we're just jumping straight into. I, I don't know if there will be a sex scene right now, but I love that the DLC is like, we know why you're here. We know what you want. Right. The following kiss is a little messy and a lot desperate. Both of us seemingly willing to lose ourselves in the press of lips and tongue. It feels good, impossibly so. But then that's never a shock when I'm with August. My life is blessed, what can I say? Should we go home? That's a loaded question. I clutch onto their coat a little tighter. Deciding if I want to really test out the sturdiness of this desk again, or if that super king back home is begging for some action. We did spend a lot on those new sheets. Ah, oh, <laughs> curses. I'm guessing that the loud knock at August's door has made the decision for me. Who the f- August reluctantly strides over to the door and tugs it open, their best scary face waiting for whoever disturbed our night off together. The messenger trembles under the weight of it, still forcing a smile as they hand August an unsealed piece of parchment. They nod once, slamming the door in the messenger's face as they begin to read. After a pregnant pause, August lets out a heavy sigh and finally raises their eyes to meet my gaze. I'm going to need you to get Piper. There's an angry chimera on the loose. But is it? Or is it a cat? Because... Uh... Piper and I sit and wait to be briefed on this apparently urgent matter. She's clearly and enthusiastically unenthused, her feet tapping against the floor rapidly where she lounges in the chair, legs spread. You must know what it is. You were here with them. I shrug. She grunts. August enters and she makes no effort to sit up, simply frowning a little harder as they take a seat at their desk. Thank you for coming at such short notice, Piper. Yeah, well, what's bloody new, right? It is your job, you know. I thought you enjoyed stabbing things anyway. She straightens up at the prospect of getting to fight something. Oh, so it's that kind of emergency. 
Not another night of Piper. Please come save us because we got all naughty in the office and I somehow locked in because my magic is stupid. I groan and cover my face with my hands. That certainly wasn't our finest moment. Guys! Guys, what are you... God damn. I knew we should have called Ezra instead. You promised us we'd never speak of that night. Get off, I'm just fucking with you. She scoffs, leaning forward and reaching across the desk to place her hand on top of August, offering them a reassuring pat. Your dirty little secrets are safe with me. Then she smirks at me, and I know that she'll hold it over us until the day we die. Anyway... They clear their throat and settle back into that familiar, stuffy demeanour that I strangely love to see. There's a chimera on the loose. Ugh. Piper groans loudly beside me, throwing her hands in the air as she hauls herself out of her chair and begins to pace. August and I exchange a knowing look, bracing ourselves for the inevitable breakdown. I grimace. Are you sure? Because last time it was a cat, and the time before that, and I'm aware that chimeras are incredibly unpredictable and murderous, and if we ignore every report that comes in involving a chimera and one actually turns up and eats the townsfolk... They throw Piper a pointed glance, then spread their hands and offer me the floor. That would be bad? Yes, it would be very bad. It's always fucking chimeras, isn't it? Can't you sign an order that makes every Lunarian get a bloody eye test? They're all mad. Look, I am very sorry that this probably unfounded report has come in at such an hour. But you two are the best, and I'd very much appreciate it if you... We're on it, don't worry. I stand and take Piper by the elbow, because the faster we get the fuck out of here and find this... whatever it is, the sooner I can drag August home. I'm genuinely in withdrawal at this point. Being in the same room as them and not touching them is becoming painful. Oi! August and I haven't seen each other properly in over a week, Piper. I promise you we'll find and kill this thing faster than I can say I'll buy the next round. She growls through clenched teeth and tosses August a glare as I drag her from their office. However, the promise of free booze seems to placate her a little. Fine. If it is a cat, you're buying drinks for the next month at Friday Club, Willenheim. I wink as a smiling August before I close the door. Piper and I step outside with nothing but a hastily scribbled pile of reports in our hands. The first report states that there was unusual activity in the forest. Unusual activity in Lunaris. A town teeming with creepy creatures. What a revelation. I know, I know, but we have to check it out. I smirk at her and knock her shoulder with mine in passing. Come on, the sooner we get this done, the sooner we can go. She sidesteps alongside me, a mischievous look on her face. How's things with the lieutenant? I cast her a sideways glance, suspicion rising. She usually gets grossed out if I talk about August things. Why do you ask... Oh no! <laughs> and then the all too familiar howl of a creature rings out. That could be a dog. It might not be a cat this time, it might just be a dog. Also, uh, excuse me, I, I need to wet my whistle. I 
I am going to be doing the, uh, the DLCs all in one. I don't want to split them up because I, I gather that they're rather short anyway. So it, it just seems a little, a little silly to be splitting them up. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be taking frequent drink breaks. And then the all too familiar howl of a creature rings out. Fuck. Fuck indeed. I look to the skies, but I already know there's no full moon until tomorrow, and our lichen treaties are solid thanks to August. There's only one other creature besides a lichen that could make such a noise. So, maybe we do have a chimera. Let's dash. Piper spins on her heel and unsheaths her daggers, heading for the tree line. I pocket the reports and follow suit. Sure enough, the forest seems... off. That's not saying a lot for Lunaris, but this particular area of the forest is in a sorrier state than usual. There's fresh, deep welts clawed into the tree trunks, and portions of the forest floor are upturned as if something was trying to bury deep. Or bury deep. But bury, bury, bury deep! I got it right the first time! Piper and I close our eyes, standing in the centre of the clearing in total silence. I let my other senses take over, my heart slowing, my fingers tingling. I can feel a creature nearby, but it feels... You've got to be fucking kidding me. It's then that I see our culprit. Is it a dog? Oh no, that's not a dog! Oh, wait. Alcar? Two glowing crimson eyes peeking from behind a tree far too, cons far too small to conceal all six foot two of him and his stupid bushy tail. Get out of here, you splendid moron, so I can clip you about both sets of ears. It's Alcar. Alcar's the only person I know who has uh, two sets of ears. That, that still freaks me out. What's all the yelling about? I'm just out here minding my own damn business. Can't a man take a walk around here anymore? You hunters are always ruining my life. Especially you. He jabs a finger in Piper's direction. And for a second I think she might snap it off. Uh, let them argue, step it. N I don't know, this... This feels like it could be a bait and switch. I don't know, I... This doesn't feel right to me. I think, I think Camille would want to step in and shut everything down. And here's the thing, I can't imagine someone would report Alcar as a chimera. I... Like, I'm getting a bait and switch feeling here. When these two are in the same room, the only thing that can quell their burning hatred for each other is a pissing match. And tonight, I don't have the patience or the energy, so I smoothly step between them. We're here on an investigation that I'd very much like to solve so I can go home to my partner. So... These claw marks and burrows. Have you seen any sign of a chimera? Alcar's cheeks turn pink. Bright pink. Alcar? Seriously? This mess was you? He throws his hands up in the air, his tail lashing wildly behind him. It's the night before the full moon, isn't it? I sigh, taking the first report out of my pocket and tearing it to shreds. It's fine, it's not your fault. <laughs> Piper, on the other hand, is less sympathetic. Her laughter can probably be heard back at headquarters. Alcar pouts a little harder, his tail now wagging so furiously that it's a mere blur. I try to reassure him. This is perfectly normal, it happens to every lichen. 
I know that. Now, can you please piss off? If I don't dig some more holes, I think I might combust. <laughs> I cringe as Piper begins to laugh again. Report number two says something about a strange figure being spotted lurking in the graveyard. That's probably Finn. It has to be either Finn or Omen. Again, not entirely unusual for a town like Lunaris, and I can't help but feel like we're truly being taken on a wild goose chase. We circle the headstones and look for clues. Nothing in particular indicating that a creature like a Chimera could have passed through. They're not exactly subtle. I can sense nothing other than a bunch of bones. You? I shrug. Same. Another dead end. Ha. <laughs> nice. Love a good graveyard joke. My feet are starting to hurt, and so is my head. Almost 24 hours without sleep will do that to you, I suppose. I can see Piper is struggling too. Her usual confident stance turning into a sleepy slump. Do you think we should split up? Piper sighs and kicks aside a hefty stone, sending it hurtling into the forest. I guess I could hit up Clue 3 while you hang out here for a bit. I grab report number three out of the pile and hand it to her. Eyeing a particularly comfortable spot in the grass, I might just take a quick break on. Deal. Meet me back at headquarters after? You've got it, boss. I roll my eyes and watch as she powers on, heading towards the des heading towards the deserted Ibeck. I settle down in the grass, a gentle breeze rustling the canopy of trees that hang over me. The stars are bright and abundant as I lay back and gaze up at the skies, and with little effort, I find myself drifting off. Probably not a good idea, really. Yeah, you're in a you're in a creepy graveyard at night, just taking a nap. That's no. This is a graveyard after all. But I just can't stop myself. Hmm. I don't know how long I doze off for, but when I wake, I do so to the sound of something flapping about my head. <laughs> oh hell the fuck no no thank you I sit up fast my head and my heart pounding and I hear a muted giggle coming from somewhere in the graveyard I stand and clutch for the dagger I keep on my holster as I see a hulking shadow out of the corner of my eye fuck I lunge, slashing blindly into the darkness, and I hit a cloud of thick black smoke that dissipates upon contact. <laughs> I hear another giggle, and the smoke curls in on itself and begins to float away, almost as if it's daring me to follow. So, like the heroic idiot I am, I oblige, Camille, no! Camille, don't act like every white girl in a horror film. Don't do that. Is this Raven? Um, now that we're in the catacombs, I'm a lot less concerned. This could just be Raven playing a, a bit of a joke. I chase it halfway across town and down into the depths of the catacombs, and the smoke comes to a standstill. Then it materialises into something that most definitely isn't a chimera. I suddenly realised I had a strange feeling I recognised that high-pitched giggle. Yep. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> You're right. Oh shit, what was your voice? I think I, I think your voice was very similar to the one I was doing for Piper. Hey, good looking. Raven. Why? 
She shrugs. Spotted you napping and thought you could do with a little something to get you back on your toes. Not mad, are you? I sigh and put my daggers away when she eyes it pointedly, almost forgetting I was holding it all together. No, I'm not mad. I was just looking for a creature. There was a report of something big and scary lurking in the graveyard. Her red eyes lighten up, practically glowing in the dull candlelight. Scary, you see. Good to know my hard work paid off. Raven, what do you mean? She wiggles her fingers in front of my face. Been working on some new forms is all. This is my biggest yet. Ah, so, another duff report then. Wonderful. I see. Then Raven stiffens up, her expression growing serious. Uh-oh. Then I hear footsteps. Please don't tell him. Camille, to what do we owe the pleasure? Hi, Finn. I offer him an awkward wave and I know he's instantly suspicious, his golden eyes flicking between Raven and me. What did she do? Raven looks at me and winks, grinning devilishly. Oh, God. Tell Finn, make Raven tell him. Okay, so... I was gonna say, if there was an option to lie, Camille wouldn't take that. I think I mentioned that before. Camille, she's a very bad actress. So I don't think she can lie particularly well. Here's the thing, Raven asked us not to tell him, so I think, I, I think Camille is a lot more inclined to just be like, Raven, come on, you, you gotta tell him. I sigh. Finn is my friend. I can't just stand here and lie to his face. He pays for most of our rounds in the wolf, and this isn't the first time Raven has scared the living daylights out of the townsfolk recently. However, I don't have to be the one to be the bad guy here. She's literally the bad guy. Raven, I think you should tell him. Tell me what? Fine. Raven hooks her arm through his and cozies up to him, sighing deeply as she flutters her lashes. See, the thing is, is that I might have found a new form to play in. I've asked you so many times. Come on, I get bored sometimes when Lux is working. What's a girl supposed to do when a sire is spending all his time buried between a wit? Okay, <laughs> uh, that's, that's enough. Ah. <sighs> You're forgiven. Just don't do it again. He offers me a sympathetic, albeit slightly embarrassed, smile. Sorry, Camille. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Finn playfully swats her away, side-eyeing her brutally as she waves at me and skips off down the corridor, disappearing into the darkness. Anyway, is there anything else we can help you with? Haven't happened to see a chimera knocking about anywhere, have you? Um, no, and I'd certainly know if there was. We all would. Horrible, smelly things. Could sense one a mile off. I sigh. I know, but we keep getting reports of one being sighted all over town. How big is this cat? If this is the same cat, this must be a heckin' great chonker of a feline. Is it not just a really big cat again? I huff a laugh, 
thinking that it probably most definitely is. Yes, at this point it has to be. I take a path through the deserted market on my way back to headquarters. No more reports to gaze upon for clues, no more nothing. At least the citizens of Lunaris are safe, and tucked up in their beds if a horrible three-headed monster does pop out of the shadows. I look up at the stars and take a deep breath, filling my lungs with fresh air and I smile. Despite a total waste of my night, I still feel like at least I've done my job. And then, a quiet meow. Hello! Uh? Coco! Oh, that's what Coco looks like! Okay! Coco? Thank you for bringing her back. I was so worried. She's been gone for hours now. I smile at Ezra, watching Coco weave between his feet, her tail flicking against his calves. No problem at all. I guess she's pretty lucky there wasn't a chimera out there. Oh, she'd be fine if there was, because she's also a chimera. <laughs> nah, she's just magic. I look at Coco and see the wise, magical glimmer in her wide eyes, and I think that she definitely would stand her own against such a beast. Then I wonder if maybe she did cause a little trouble on her travels. Are you okay? Do you want some tea? His green eyes glisten at the prospect of offering hospitality, but I'm dying to get home to August. I'll pass tonight. Thank you. Plus, it's stupid o'clock. Aren't you tired? Then I hear footsteps upstairs. Purposefully loud footsteps. The night is young for vampires. It definitely is. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Good night, Camille. Good night, Ezra. After meeting up with Piper back at the office and debriefing, I drag myself across town and back home. Finally! I push open the bedroom door and find exactly what I hoped I would. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Hey! I could say the same about you. I've truly never been happier to remove my uniform. I groan and begin to peel mine off in solidarity, the feel of the fabric falling away nothing short of euphoric. August is watching me intently, brow quirked and as tired as I am. Oh my god! seat upon the edge of the bed and beckon them over. Come here. What's the magic word? I roll my eyes and reach out, taking them by the hips and tugging them into my lap. Now! I knew it. That's the one. I let myself feel, my hands roaming over their torso, lower, lower. They tremble beneath the slide of my palms, lashes dipped and cheeks pink as they watch the path I map. I've been wanting to touch you all day. Are you still tired? Absolutely not. They splay their palms against my chest and push me backward, my back hitting the mattress with a thud. 
Their lips are eager to find mine. The kiss, sweet but hungry, lazy and reverent. When they pull away briefly, I'm struck by the way they look. Their features half cast in candlelight, half in the bright light of the moon. I still can't believe that they're mine. The few remaining scraps of fabric that separate us are discarded. The sheets soft and clean as we slide beneath them. Tomorrow will always come too soon, but for now, we get lost in one another. Every hitched breath, every desperate kiss, everything. I suppose that Lunaris isn't quite so boring after all. And there we go. That was uh, possibly a cam possibly a chimera, probably a big fucking cat. What's the next one called? Out of cure till death. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay, and mm, I'm going to think about that. I'm going to think on that one. Well, we will get to Till Death in the next episode. So, until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.